Hello and good morning. You should be able to hear me okay now. How's everybody doing? Good to see you. This is my very first uh, design master class. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining me, everyone. Hopefully you're having a wonderful day uh, or evening. I see you out there, Froja, Caroline, Andreas. Um, yeah, new art in the background. That's kind of fun as well. So again, I just want to welcome you uh today so yeah this is gonna be good uh it's all about sort of vector design because something that's been missing actually um on fridays is sort of graphic design and sort of vector work so uh, like illustrator hasn't really had a chance to shine so uh, that is our goal today is to really focus on illustrator so that's what i'm going to do right now as i open it up and welcome everybody good to see you here i'm also going to work on the ipad as well because we have illustrator on the ipad so that's going to be a lot of fun um and uh yeah that's about it hopefully everybody's doing well and uh, you can see me and all the stuff all right that ah, looks pretty good and Thanks for joining me elsewhere. So let me just type it. Welcome. All right, cool. Uh, let's do this. Let's switch gears and share my screen. So hopefully everybody's doing well. This fine. Um, what is today? Friday. All right. Skulls and flowers, oh my. All right, so um, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna kind of start with uh, just like a template that I always use, which has a lot of colors in it in Illustrator. So uh, I currently have it set to 1080 by 1350, which is like an Instagram size, the larger Instagram post size, just so you know. So you can check out uh, those uh, results. Uh, and there we go. Create. I'm just getting rid of this other noise. Hopefully you guys have your coffee too, by the way. All right. Cool. Let's do this. Here we are. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly sort of create a lot of squares. So kind of what I want to do is I want to create some fun squares and an abstract design just to kind of give you a vision for it. Uh, kind of like this stuff. So Johnny Studio, really like Johnny's work. And you'll see this style in lots of places, but J-H-O-N-N-Y Studio. Uh, he does this cool graphic work like you can see right here. So sort of kind of creating something like that where we're gonna, we're gonna sort of do a bunch of squares, square version, but you can see all of his gorgeous work and that is the goal. Kind of something like this. I'm sure you've seen this type of work out there before uh, and we're gonna do something similar, so. Uh, all right, Marsha Grasset is just getting up, sipping her latte. I will be sure to use my inside voice uh, and let's dive into this. And also uh, the goal is to kind of make it kind of like um, sort of a pride flag too. So it's gonna have a current, certain color scheme. Um, the number of ways we could do this, by the way. So I wanna create a grid really fast. We will uh, go up to file, uh, guides and grid. Let's make a grid line every 100 pixels and split it with four subdivisions, grids and back. Click OK. We don't see anything yet because I actually need to turn it on. So under view, you got to go down to show grid, turning that on and there it is. And then also the, th the last thing is toggling this. I know uh, a lot of designers that do this sort of grid type of work will actually uh, toggle this on and off because sometimes you want it and sometimes you don't. But now we have snapped grid turned on. We can go in and draw out uh, this little square like so. All right, I'm gonna do this really fast, guys, because I realize this is a master class and this is pretty straightforward, right? We could do this. We could do a click and drag, right? like that, holding down the option key, and then command D. That's one way to sort of make multiple versions. Ba, 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 ba. Right, we can do that, oh shoot. <laughs> I might make this a little larger, actually. Just so my grid lines work, by the way, I'm gonna make this larger, silly me. I'm gonna make it 1100, or 10, 
700. Silly me. I'm going to make this like 1100 now. Grab this. I'm gonna extend this out just a touch, by the way, because I actually want this to be perfect. So I've made all of these. Let's go ahead and duplicate them down. Click and drag like so. I can check off to the side. I can see, oh, it's not quite, the Y isn't quite 150, but I can make that Y 150 so it's perfectly uh, in the, the spot that I need it in, right? So again, just drag it down. And command D, da, 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 we're making our grid. And let's extend this down a little bit more as well. All right, so I need to extend this down. Okay, let's get rid of this artboard. All right, uh, grabbing it right down here. But the thing is, once you've created artwork and you try to adjust your artboard, sometimes you'll move that art artboard with the artwork. It's because this is turned on. And this says, you know what? Move copy artwork with the artboard. Well, I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna turn that off because all I wanna do is drag this down like so. There we are. Cool. There we go. We have all of our squares. We can do a command Y and we can see all those squares like so. Okay, so this is going to get pretty awesome pretty quickly. Happy New Year, Nick. I see you there. Garrett, what's up? Um, yeah, Peter, Peter Max-ish kind of, yeah, uh, in terms of that design of Johnny's work. Uh, but there we have it. Command Y. We have all of these squares, which sure, I could like change them to a different color and do some things. Another way to create this grid Here's another way you guys might do things is you might actually jump out here, create one and then go over here and you use like the blend tool. Do you guys ever do that? Like sort of take one to the next, right? And then let's, uh, let's give this just like an outline too, just so we can see what these look like for this first one and this last one. Let's flip it just so you can see the number that it has made. So we can see in here, it actually already did it perfectly because if we take a look at the blend tool right in here, uh, specified steps, nine specified steps between one and 10, right? So you'll think to go 10 and that's not gonna do it, right? You need to just basically subtract one and that's what you'll do with your blend tool, okay? Uh, all right, what's up, David? So that's one way to sort of create this grid. This is the final way I'm gonna do this really fast because, oh, I gotta find it now. Oh, it's been a while. It has been a while. Let's go in here. Let's go to my additional tools and we will just reset everything because I think I might have hit it. But right in here, when you view the tools, you actually get an idea for what all the all the tools are without like clicking on them and revealing them like that. Okay, so I can actually see right in here the number of tools that we have. So kind of going from the top, we can go into drawing. Here we are, rectangular grid, right? The line segment tool, that's where it is. So that's just another way to find tools uh, if you want. So let's hide that. Let's go in here. Here's our rectangular grid tool. You can click once. In here, this allows you to go ahead and create this grid. 100 by 100. Uh, you can have dividers if you want to. Um, uh, yeah, we'll make the dividers 10, okay? We'll click okay, and there's my grid. Uh, in this case, it's like 1100. Let's make it 1100 by 1100. So the grid is 1100 by 1100. Uh, you can have horizontal horizontal and vertical. There we go. We have our grid made using the grid tool in Illustrator. Cool. I know this might seem kind of, uh, I don't know, we're just dealing with boxes and lines. It's not, it's not uh, vector magic like I'm promising. Shame on me. 
But let's uh, let's make this some vector magic. So let's go back to this one. Right, what do I have? I have a number of squares that I could start coloring, which is just gonna take some time. And I might stick to one of these color palettes maybe. I don't know, I kinda want them bright. I would love to have some pink in there, right? And this is just gonna take some time. Let me share with you, Tanya and Michelle and everyone, uh, what are we making a grid for? We're gonna make like a, uh, a f uh, sort of like a pride flag with characters in it. So we're gonna do some abstract characters, abstract design, uh, sort of based on like a certain color scheme, okay? So rather than coloring these individually, which is gonna just take me forever, I can select all of these, and this is, I absolutely love this, you're gonna have to go find this, but what's available to you are scripts. And my, probably my favorite script is the random swatches fill. So take all of these squares and randomly fill them in with colors that I've decided. All right, so that's what I wanna do. If I select it, nothing's gonna happen because I haven't selected my swatches yet. So I'll go over here and I'll say, you know what? I want this to be, oh, uh, I like this uh, teal, pink, this bright green, this yellow, a gold, um, a purple, of course, and then a dark blue. So I've selected the colors that I've wanted. I can kind of move them up here too. Selected all these colors. We'll go to File, Scripts, and Random Swatches Fill. There it is. So I'll select that, and sure enough, it colorized everything. So I could do that a couple times, by the way. Like if I don't like the initial results, I can go back in there and just do it again. Random Swatches Fill. I'm gonna go with this one. And then I can individually jump in and say, hey, you know what? I think there needs to be some teal up here. We need more pink, because I love that hot pink, right? On my way. Cool. All right. All right, we got it going on. So let's save this file. I'm gonna save this as a cloud document. Right, we're gonna call this grid. I don't know, grid's such a boring word. Uh, cube madness. That's more fun. <laughs> Calling it cube madness. It's now a cloud file. So I could actually open this up on my um, good old, let me just disconnect this, iPad. All right? So now I'm gonna kinda switch to the iPad and dive into some of this work as well. Hello, Nina, from Pakistan. Good to have you here, thank you. All right, let's switch over, bam, shablam, check, check. Audio's coming through, everything is good. Ah, yes, two Henrys in the chat. Checking up on everyone. All right, here we are. So iPad, we can go to my work, right? And we can see our cube madness right there. I can click and open that up. Cube madness. A swatch of square garden. All right, we'll click okay. We can see all of our various cubes. So now I wanna kind of shift gears and say, you know what, I could have done this actually all on the iPad. So I can turn that off. Let's sort of turn off that layer. Let's turn off that layer. And I could have done this directly from my iPad because you can see right up here, I really wish I can kind of zoom in on this, but it is on my iPad. I, I can control the grid and create my grid on the iPad as well. So you can see it right over here. It's 100 by 100 with my uh, straight up subdivisions that I have set up. I can jump in, maybe, you know, flip these if I want to. Uh, but I also have snapping, snap to grid set up. And I can go ahead and draw that out. And I could do a, you know, a duplicate and move, right? But here's what I would do in this case, by the way. Nina and Reverb Mike and Sahil. Uh, am I drinking a protein shake? No, I'm not. I'm drinking coffee. I need all the coffee I can get today. All right, so um, taking this, 
rather than going through all that work that I did on my uh, desktop, what I can do, and rather than duplicating this, by the way, even though we have this magic button, hold on, let me undo that, that will allow me to drag it, right? I can drag it like that using this touch modifier, and I can make multiple versions like that. But I don't even want to do that. I'm thinking, you know what? I can select this, go and use my repeat options, and there's repeat grid in there. So I would select repeat grid, and now I can go ahead and stretch this out as far as I want. But not only that, control, we can see, doo -doo -doo, zero. I, I do think this part's a little tricky because you gotta really like nail it just right. But take that down to zero. So hopefully you see that. And then take not only the columns, but the rows down to zero as well. Boom, there we are. Right. By the way, I can still jump in and edit these because we see that the thickness of that line is pretty extreme, right? We see that over here. Let's go ahead and take that down as well. Let's make it like one point, but that's the, that's the grid where it's at and, um, I could snap it into place. X 400. Uh, so hopefully everybody caught that. I'm gonna do that one more time just since I did it so fast. Here's my square. Let's do a grid repeat. Let's take that down to zero. Let's take the, the um, rows down to zero and we could extend this out now. Zoop, zoop, all the way across like so. And there we have our uh, lovely grid. Cool. Bam, bam. Right, and from there we can go ahead and expand it. Right, we can not only expand it, we can also remove the mask that's on it as well. Right, and by the way, these are still grouped, just ungroup them. So now we have access to those individual squares. I can get the, rid of some of the ones on the sides and the bottom because sometimes it'll give you like that extra, like I guess row, something like that, right? And now I can individually change these. By the way, the color palette I was dealing with is also right in here. So I can go in and see all my swatches that I was using on the desktop are right in here as well. All right, let's get to, let's get to creating. These fun squares, let's make something fun. Hey, Farrah Manley's in the house. Good to see you, Farrah. Awesome. Oh, Thess from snowy Sweden. Okay, so for some of these, this is what I wanna do. I'll actually take this. This is what I'm thinking I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have some fun with this. I'm gonna take this, I'm going to copy it. I'm gonna add a new layer and I'm gonna paste it. So I've just pasted a layer on top, right? And for this, I'm gonna rotate it 180 degrees, like that, so it's upside down. So what I have now is I have two different versions. I have, boop, this one, and then I have this one. I'll lock the one in the, on the bottom, and I'll play, this one, play with this one on the top. So now I can come in here and do that circle, right? And do this one, right? Playing with our sort of patterns, as you can see. Zoop, like so. We'll do this a couple times with some things and then we'll modify it some more, right? Change the color, bam. How is everyone doing today? We're making a fun design that's more of a minimalist art style, which is pretty hot right now. So uh, that's what's happening. And I'm just showing you like shortcuts to get ahead, right? Also, if you're wondering, just to give you some inspiration, by the way, um, I've actually already done this on, uh, ooh. Oh, ooh, I'm just knocking stuff around. Here we go. There we go, just so you can see like, um, what I'm uh, just to give you a clearer vision for kind of what I'm making right now. Here's my Instagram, P T R A N I, 
and uh, right here so it's like creating this sort of design artwork as you can see so this is the goal right have some fun with this but we're gonna take this to the next level and I thought it'd be fun to add some people to it all right cool all right Oh good, I'm glad you like where it's going because it gets fun based on like, honestly, if you use the right colors, it can get really interesting. And I'm gonna modify this some more, not to worry. Oops, let's move that one around. You could see this is gonna take a while, but I think it's very uh, kind of like soothing and just fun to, uh, fun to work on just like it feels very peaceful to do this like it's just nice design work that we're working on now for some of these now for this one let's get into this a little bit more detail i'm rounding all the corners right we can see what i'm doing there i'm rounding all those corners um maybe what i want to do instead of rounding all the corners i might want to round just one so let's go up here for this one rather than rounding all four we could double tap, we could select just that corner. So we're now in a direct selection mode, right? And we can take that and we can curve it like so, right? Like that. Okay, so we could see that shape that's made and we could do that a couple times. Bring that in like so, checking the time. We're about 22 minutes in, I better hurry up. Let's get it done. Jeez, Paul, get your work done. Double tap, select, da da. By the way, you don't necessarily need to double tap because there's this direct selection tool off in your menu, off to the side. So I could just tap on this, tap on that one little guy, stretch it up like so, and there we have it. So with this, you could start to see some interesting things happen. It's like, okay, I can go in, tap this one. Uh, tap this one right here, actually. Bring this one in do this a couple times and make our diamond right um, unlock that background layer and we can play with these colors so we could have a dark let me just play with this dark dark light light and then change this to a different color and then we just have a nice diamond all right is the repeat to tool uh, on the desktop version unfortunately it's not but we are working on it trust me um, because if I would transfer this to the desktop um, anything that I used the repeat say grid or mirror or radial it will just go ahead and ungroup those just so you know so it will come through um, but uh, might have some modifications. Another couple of things we could do is we can go in here and just delete it. Oh, did I delete it? Let's, let's change the color first. Okay, so it's, let me undo that. I actually did delete it. Let's lock that background. Um, Again, I'm adjusting the individual. Let's select a corner, let's delete, oh. Sorry, let's just double tap, ba, ba Selecting this point, right, and then removing, right? So how about if we just do that? Selecting that corner and then just like removing. And you can see we're making that diamond. Cool, you guys get the, uh, you get the gist of what we're going for. We have these on object controls. And let's bring in some faces, huh? Let's do that as well. Hopefully everybody's doing great on this fine Friday. Sahil, what's up? Wake up, do stuff, sleep, repeat. That's about it. <laughs> so let's kind of shift gears a little bit because uh, I want to I wanna do some more fun things. Okay, let's do fun stuff. Uh, let's like actually you know what let's just make let's make a character here shall we all right let's make a character let's have fun making a character right 
We'll come, we'll come up here. We will actually do this maybe on a, a new layer, right, just for fun. And let's just draw out um, potentially a square. There you go, Paul. Right, I can hold on the Shift key and get that. I can select these bottom two points like so, and I can curve that just like so, right? Let's get rid of the stroke and give it a color of something fun like that. And you can see right here, we have sort of like the making of a person. So we can have, we can give them a hat if we want to. So we'll come up here, we'll make another lovely uh, square and round the top, kind of like that, and then change that color too. Of course, that hat's a little high, it's a little ridiculous. Let's go in here, let's remove that, let's remove that point, kind of like that, there we go, boom done add a line oops there we go let's add a line right in here the brim of the hat flip it and change the thickness like that and of course, round it. There we are. Oops. I have it set up to where you, when you double tap, it actually will paste. Anyways. What do you want, sleepy guy, or do you want um, awake guy? Let's make awake guy. Zoop, zoop, like that. Let's fill it with white. There we are. Uh, you know, an, e an easier way to do this, I'm actually going the long way, because I was modifying this square to make an eyeball, when all I really need to do is jump in here and make a circle. And then with this circle, select that bottom point and uh, remove it. By the way, this is really cool. Let me let me do this. You ready for this? This is amazing. Uh, lo logica. Um, I can actually, let's do this. Un undo, bah. Let's undo that. I can select this point. Um, I think if I hold down this control point, I can select, hold on. There we go. Hmm, this is gonna take me a while. Trying to figure out how to select these two points. Uh, these two Bezier points, not the actual points, but the Bezier portion. And um, I, have to, I have to work on it. Oh, there we go, I got it. Using this touch modifier, I don't know why it didn't work initially, but pressing down on it can now can select these two points and now I can move them uh, in unison, if you will. I get the degrees. So if I do want to bring that up to zero, I can bring that up to zero if I want to. Like that, okay? Again, just showing you the kind of control you have. Uh, when it comes to what we're making today. All right, let's go right over here. And let's turn off snap to grid, which you need to do sometimes. In fact, let's bring it up here first. Let's snap to grid, let's bring it up here, back to where it was, turn it black, turn off snap to grid, and then we can scale this down like so. Okay, you guys get the idea. Whew. My keyboard is not quite working, but that's okay. Let's just group those. There 
Okay, let me show you something else as well. Hopefully you guys find this valuable. I think this is pretty important stuff. I keep using my keyboard and my keyboard is not working. All right, so go in here, turn on snap to grid really fast. Let's draw out this. Let's go in here to these individual points. If I select that one point, hopefully you guys can see this. Let's zoom in on that bad boy. Selecting this point here, we get these different options down at the bottom. Okay? So we have the ability to just remove, and also they're off to the side. So we could take a look. This, These are what these uh, different options do. There's a convert to corner, right? We can see what it does there. Convert to curve. We could do a smart delete, or we could just cut the path. Right, so those are our options, right, right in here. So I can go ahead and, and by the way, if I just hit uh, delete on my keyboard, or not, but anyways, cut. We can see what we did there if we cut it. We've, we've actually cut that path. So can you see it now? I've actually cut that path and it does the obvious. So I can hit the trash can, right? Just delete and now we have our nose, which is what I was going for, right? There we go, you guys get the idea. Or mouth, we can make this the mouth. <laughs> Paste. Bring that into place. Increase. That thickness. Personally, I like this a lot better. Let's get these eyes squared away. There we are. He needs eyebrows. He needs a number of things. Okay. How's everyone doing? Just kind of uh, catching up on chat. Yes. The keyboard does need coffee. Right, this guy is like, okay, I would exaggerate all of these features, quite frankly. Let's go in here, let's take these two. Like, he has too much of a forehead. Take that down. Make the eyes smaller. Let me actually shift gears, by the way. Let me show you on the desktop, because I've actually done this before. I was showing you how to do it on the iPad, and here's a bunch of characters that uh, you know I've created on the desktop. So I've actually gone through all of this work already. Okay, we can see a number of these characters, all made kind of the same way. It's right in here, zoop, here they are, right? We could see kind of what's happening here. We have, again, this is just a rectangle with rounded corners, and uh, we have these eyeballs, or I've just kind of taken out sort of a chunk right here to kind of create that highlight. So these little details, I think actually just take it, you know, bring it a long way. We can see just the outline of this face. So we could use some of these characters for our illustration, okay? So I've already drawn one. You guys kind of see how I made it, and now I can jump ahead and uh, show you, like, you use these other characters too if I need to, right? Do you guys work this way, by the way? Like, it's like, I've already done this before. Would I recreate it or would I just take what I've already drawn, right? In this case, I've actually already drawn this stuff. But let's go to File Open. We can see there's lovely Cube Madness. This is in my cloud documents right there. We can open this up. Where's our character? Where is our character? Where is our character? There it is. Okay, there he is. Cool. 
there it is. Sometimes you'll actually have, when I'm working from desktop to uh, iPad, sometimes I have the same file open multiple times and there's conflicts. So just kind of keep that in mind. So here's our okay character. Here's all the fun people that we could potentially pull from as well. Okay. I think a lot of these look pretty good. Let's take, uh, let's get rid of, let's take this guy for instance. Let's copy him. Let's bring him into this environment and have some fun with him. All right. Let's go into scale strokes and effects, scale corners. So when I scale it down, all those strokes scale down as well. So let's just do this really fast. I gotta hurry. I gotta hurry up. I don't know why. I'm not really doing this for a client. <laughs> all right, let's see what I do can do if I actually just like remove the stroke. There we go. There we go. There we go. Let's use our color palette as well. Uh, oh, thank you so much, Marsha. You're too kind. So this is the thing. And this guy initially was not the same style as um, as what I'm going for down here. Because first off, I want to make him fun and colorful. So let's do that really fast. Boom, boom, hit I, ba bow. The hair is gonna be fun. He's starting to look like a Simpsons character. Let's pull from our palette, by the way, off to the side, sure enough. Um, yeah, let me see right in here. And let's just play with this. Maybe purple. What do you think, purple, will that work? There we go, sort of this is our, potentially our color scheme, right, for this guy. And the cool thing is we can like integrate him in with this design, right? And uh, I definitely wanna make this larger and bigger and all the stuff, right? We can have sort of a character right here. We can take these various elements too. It's like this eyeball, let's bring this eyeball, uh, you know, and put it in just like a different spot like so. Um, whether this is effective or not, I don't know. But again, there's like an eyeball and we'll just do like different pictures of people. All right, let's go in here. Let's actually change this nose, by the way, because the nose is actually sticking out a little bit. But if we just make it orange, we can see that that looks pretty good. Uh, okay, what's the best to step to start animation? That is a great question, by the way. I see ya. Um, is like if you did want to bring this into say After Effects, right? How would we do that? Just so you know what, I would do it a couple different ways as far as like getting your artwork into After Effects. I end up using um, Overlord, right? But it just depends on the project. Overlord will allow you to push your Illustrator files to, um, to After Effects, right? Or you can see you can pull the selection from After Effects and work on it back in Illustrator. So this is your connection um, between uh, Illustrator and After Effects. Cool, there's our character. We could save him by bringing him up. We can grab maybe another character. Look at how many we have. Option Command zero. There's a hundred artboards, a total of a hundred characters in here. Um, but we can take um, someone else. Let's take this lady. First of all, what I can do, let's see, I think and a lot of this isn't grouped, so let's do this. We'll go into select, we'll go to same um, stroke color, and it will select all of those characters that have a black stroke. Because before my new design, I actually don't need that black stroke at all. So let's just go ahead and get rid of it all at once. And now you can see all these characters Actually, they might be missing some mouths. I know that for sure because I made it. <laughs> 
but uh, in general, I've kind of prepped them for that, uh, that new layout that I'm working on. Okay, cool. Let's do it. Let's have some fun today. Taking a character, bringing them in. Uh, merge swatches. New character. And I'd probably have to play with the size. All right. What else is what else is everybody doing today, huh? Just hanging out. Just living 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 the dream. You guys living the dream. Make this maybe a little darker. I don't know. Like that. You guys get the idea. Yeah, uh, what's the, what else you got? Uh, oh, Michelle, I'm so glad you like the characters, right? Because that's what I'm working on. Select, same, fill color for this character. And uh, we can, oops, have some fun with it as well. Because it doesn't, person doesn't, the whole goal of this is like, I'm kind of, kind of doing a sort of a pride flag type theme. Um, and it's just about different different people and different cultures of, of different colors, purple, green, blue, and merging it all together. So that's sort of the concept, right? So we could have a fun person like this that, yeah, maybe they are purple, right? We can have some fun with that. Key thing is, is just stick to this, this palette. Whatever palette you're using, you can see that these are global colors because I have a little notch taken out of them. So I can always change that color later on through my global color swatches or through um, uh, edit color. So I can always do, the, do that later. Okay, we need a fun shirt. There we go. Character done. Uh, I should probably decide on rounded co corners or uh, rounded caps as well. I think I'll go rounded, but there's this character too. Cool, let's take them, bring them into the, bring them into the illustration. Like that. Maybe bring them over here. There we go. You get the idea. <laughs> Something like that. Cool. Um, and I want all this to like kind of melt together. So I love, I love implied line and I love it when things like melt one into the next. See how the shirt disappears, how the ear disappears. That's what I'm going for, right? Just, I just like that look. I think it's gonna pay off well, well for me. The hair alone might be too complex, right? But uh, anyways, let's move on. Here's another thing I could do. You ready for this? I have all these thousands of characters not thousands, there's exactly 100. Let's select this color, select same, fill color. Let's do this actually, this is what I wanna do. I wanna take all these characters and bring them right into my other illustration. Rather than copying and pasting each one individually, let's go in here and let's create a new layer that has all, all our characters. Paste, let's merge those swatches. They're coming in, just wait for it. Oh, kind of like the Who Is It game, Lizette. I don't know the Who Is It game, but huh, I'm into it. Oh, did I even hit okay? Oh, I got apply to all, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, silly me. There they all are. Oh, look at that. Look at what I had, because I was I was actually smart at one point in my life. Cause right down here. By the way, I can go ahead and turn off that grid so we can hide grid. There we go. Here they all are. And this is lovely, the different body parts. It's gonna be so fun to work with. 
I almost want to do that more than anything. But here's sort of like all my characters. So now with all these characters in here, you ready for this? Let's change up stuff. Let's, let's grab this, this white boy. Right? Because guess what? Ungrouped, you're no longer going to be just this vanilla color, right? We're going to select that color, same, fill color, and we're going to go ahead and make them yellow, like so. Cool. Select, same, fill color again. Come on, mouse, you could do it. Let's go purple and green and blue. So let's do a blue here, same fill color. Is that blue too bright? I think it's okay. All right. Same fill color again and pink. There we go. Is this too crazy, guys? Am I crazy? Hello, Abid. Uh, and if you're joining me elsewhere, I see you, uh, Richard and Tiffany and everyone. I am on Behance.net forward slash Adobe Live. So uh, let's select another fill color. And let's go with blue. All right, so I'll, I'll work on this. I'm going to integrate all these characters. Uh, I know I'm missing some eyes and some eyebrows, that's okay. But I also have these different body parts and things. So I could take some of these and integrate this into my design as well. So that would be the goal. Ba -ba, ba -ba. Select, copy, bring them over, right? Let's just do a new layer, paste them in, and adjust accordingly. So we can give sort of this circle a smile, like so. We can put uh, maybe a couple eyeballs right over here. And again, sometimes you need to turn off Snap to Grid just to get everything positioned right. And just like I was doing on the, on my mobile device, on my iPad specifically, Round that up. Round that up like so. Change that color. You get the idea. All right, holy cow. Time is flying by. All right, so just stay tuned as I work on this some more, just so you know. I'll uh, be adding more of these characters. This is gonna take me more time, but it's gonna, I want it to be like kind of abstract, kind of like this. So that's what I'm going for. Once I have that done, by the way, I can save this file, right? I can push this content and let me just open up um, just a design that I have that's just a little, little bit more cleaned up. Right, so we'll just open up this one, right? This is the one I posted to Instagram. Um, a lot of how this was created, by the way, really fast, are these little dots. You know what? I didn't go in and make these individual dots. They're actually, if you can see over here, they're actually swatches. So I can come in and say, select this one right here, take that, and you know what? In my appearance panel, right down here, add a new fill, wait for it add a new fill and have that fill be these dots. Ready? So let's just make sure that's in view. And then bam, 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 stripes. You guys get the idea. Kind of playing with what I think would look good for this, right? So much easier uh, to work with, right? I'm really into, I like those dots. I like this, that's fun. I think we'll go with that. Right, so again, let's make life easy on us. Zoop, go over here. Hey, let's throw a fun one up here as well. There we are. We'll move down. Maybe one right here. Some more little dots. And that's really fun. All right, cool. There it is. Geometric patterns. 
right? We can go into After Effects, which I knew I'd probably, uh, you know, stuff. You know, I want to do magic. I'm showing you how to make things easily, right? That's the goal. Let's uh, create a new project with a new composition. S you know, something like that. So there we are. Just like in um, in uh, Illustrator, I can draw in After Effects. I would actually import my graphics, but we'll get to this set, that in a second. Because you can see I've actually created this rectangle using the rectangle tool up here, right? We've done that in um, good old um, Illustrator. So let's twirl this down. We didn't really want a fill, so we could have modified that at the beginning, but we could also delete that fill as well. So we have this stroke, right? We see that stroke right there. What if we want to animate it or have somebody smile or something like that? Well, we can do that as well. So right over here, this is what I would do. Again, we want to animate things. We would go into trim paths, right? We'll go to trim paths. Boom. There it is. Trim path. Sorry, my head's in the way. Uh, we can start it and add an end keyframe. So adding two keyframes for these two properties. Okay, so this is actually the final square. So we'll take that down, we'll move it in a couple seconds, say five seconds, and then we can adjust, say, the start point or the end point. So if I adjust the end point, we can see how that wraps around, zoop, zoop, like that. So now we could have it start at zero, and then we can see it sort of draw on, right? So that would be our goal. What I would do with my fun illustrations is kind of have things animate on using masks and fun stuff like that. Okay, if this had a fill, by the way, it would it would actually start to fill it in. So let's actually see. I go in here. Uh, I'd have to add another fill. Boop. So there's my fill, and watch what happens when I add the fill. You can see it does that, which is also kind of cool, by the way. So again, trim pass, easy to work with. You guys get the idea. Um, it is hopefully going to be pretty cool and pretty awesome when I'm done, Gus. Hopefully you like it. And this is also something I would do. I would go, Illustrator, here's my file, right? Here's all these graphics. I can push this, like I said, using something like Overlord, which is not part of Illustrator, uh, but just it's by Battle Axe. I can go ahead and push selection to After Effects. Clicking right there, right? It will push that to After Effects. Make sure that panel, here's my Overlord panel as well. Wait for it. Oh, I gotta select the shapes first. I didn't have them all selected. So they're all selected. Let's go ahead and push them. I can push a couple of them, by the way. Let me just push these top ones in the upper corner and I got one minute left. Push, right? Come on, buddy, be my friend. And it will actually send it to after, there we go. So this is why I only did a couple because it actually is gonna bring them all in as their separate layers, right? Um, and that's essentially what happens. Let's actually get rid of that shape layer and do that one more time. But I'm actually out of time, guys. Shoot. Uh, more later, and luckily I get you for the Photoshop Masterclass in about an, an hour and a half. So thank you so much uh, for watching. Another way is just to do a file import with that illustration and uh, start to work with it that way. All right, everybody, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Hopefully you enjoyed my first design masterclass. Uh, we got a full day of fun stuff happening uh, that I'm uh, checking the schedule for right now, but uh, it's actually below you. So Terry White is up next. Oh, awesome, photography masterclass is gonna be really fun. Thank you so much. I'm gonna turn over to T. White, the one and only. So thanks so much for watching and uh, I will see you guys shortly. Thank you.